Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to episode eight of Summer Shredding. Today should be a pretty interesting day, so I thought it would be a good day to pick up my camera and bring y'all along with me. The first things I'm doing this morning are some housekeeping things. We gotta clean the chicken coop, we need to do the dishes, but it has been cold the past couple of days, but today it is supposed to be like sunny and 79, but should just be a really chill, fun day. I am going to bring y'all along with me for episode eight, show you what I'm eating, show you the workouts I'm doing, and it should be a great day. So let's go ahead and get the day started. Woohoo! I seriously don't know how so much poop comes out of these tiny little bodies. So they smell this morning. I usually clean out their cage every day to day and a half or I'm always putting in new puppy pads, but they stink this morning. So it is time for a whole little cage clean out. So the first thing we've got to do is catch all of these little crazy things. for the babies to go back in here. I put clean wrap on top of this heater because they'll get up here and poop all over it and this is the easiest way to clean it. So we are not gonna forget to put the lid on where they can get out and the dogs chase them like I did yesterday. So that is on there. Now let's add in the babies and I can guarantee you within five minutes, it's gonna look like an utter disaster in here. And you're not allowed to be in here. Come on, get out. Y'all are too crazy around the chickens. I figured I could show you each baby as I put them back in. So this is baby number one, baby number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. This one's number 10. And this little wild thing is number 11 who does not want to pose for the camera. Seriously, look at how dirty they got it in just the time it took me to grab 11 chicks out of a box. They literally just throw it everywhere. There's no keeping it nice and clean and tidy, you crazy things. some coffee this morning so I'm gonna do two tablespoons of half and half I'm going to use my little milk frother to get it frothy nice and thick add in the coffee and a sprinkle of cinnamon and there we go coffee is ready I'll tell you what, I have been craving some ribs on our smoker for the longest time. We haven't really cooked on our smoker because when it's cold outside, I just am not a big fan of coming out here and cooking. But it is warming up, it is a beautiful day today, so guess what? We pulled out our smoker, we just turned it on, we have it coming up to temp, and today we are going to cook some 3 to one ribs. I have showed y'all me cooking these ribs before, but man, you end up with the most tender, fall off the bone ribs, and they are just so darn delicious. It takes six hours to cook the rack of ribs, but it is very well worth it. So good. So 
We are gonna have to go inside and get the ribs prepped really soon to throw them on the grill at lunchtime so we can have them for dinner later today. We're gonna be cooking up a slab of these St. Louis style pork spare ribs and we're gonna be using some yellow mustard as a binder as well as the Meat Church The Gospel all-purpose rub to season it with. The first thing I did was remove the membrane that is on the back of the ribs. That is called basically a silver skin and it does not get tender when you cook it. So you want to just grab a paper towel and rip it off of the inside of the ribs. Now we're going to go ahead and use some yellow mustard as our binder and basically just spread that mustard all over. You don't taste the mustard, it just helps the seasoning stick to the meat. So. Just going to use my hands, rub that all in. And now we're gonna go in with our seasoning and sprinkle that all over. And then I'm gonna use my hands and pat it in. And we like to go pretty liberal on the seasoning because it just gives it so much more flavor. Get, the flap up. Get underneath the little flap. I'm just gonna press this seasoning in and then we're gonna flip the rack of ribs over and do it on the other side as well. All right, y'all gonna go ahead and throw these ribs on the grill. I didn't bring uh, some mitts outside, so we're just using the end of this. We're gonna throw them right there on the grill. All right, so these bad boys are gonna go on the grill for about three hours and we're gonna check them every hour. And then at hour three, we'll take them off, wrap them, and let them finish up. So I'm gonna have Cody close the grill because my hands are gross, but I'll keep y'all updated on the ribs throughout the day. They're gonna be so darn good in the pits and spits. We got the grill rolling, and now we are running to the store real quick to run a couple of errands. I need to go to Tractor Supply and get some chick food and puppy pads for them. Oh, and there goes my camera. And we need to go to H-E-B and grab a couple of things that we need at the house. It is 2.38 and neither Cody or I have had any food today besides the like half cup of coffee I had earlier. So while we were at HEB, I picked up a rotisserie chicken as well as this right here, some carb balanced tortillas. And I'm gonna make Cody and I some chicken quesadillas. I thought that would be a pretty quick and easy but delicious meal for us. We got our rotisserie chicken shredded so I can make us our quesadillas. And a little fun fact that I didn't realize until recently, if you get a rotisserie chicken, it is a million times easier to just shred the chicken when you get home while it is still warm and it'll shred apart so, so easily. If you throw it in the refrigerator and then try and do it later, that meat gets hard and it's so difficult to just sit there and pull it apart. We did this in like three minutes versus the last time I pulled apart a cold rotisserie chicken. It took me like 25. So 10 out of 10 recommend uh, pulling it apart as soon as you get home. So for the quesadillas, I am going to use just some of this Mexican blend shredded cheese I have. I'm gonna use a little sprinkle of this Blackstone taco and fajita seasoning just to give it a little extra kick. And like I mentioned, these carb balanced tortillas that I picked up at HEB. To make these, I'm just gonna throw a tortilla down in the pan, sprinkle on a little bit of cheese, add some of my freshly shredded rotisserie chicken, going in with a sprinkle of my taco seasoning, a little bit more cheese so the tortilla sticks to the other side. Pop one more tortilla on and we're just gonna let her crisp up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and a great use for some rotisserie chicken. Let's give her a good flip. And let the other side toast and our quesadilla will be ready. Here is what the quesadilla ended up looking like. I made myself one but I stuffed it full of rotisserie chicken and some cheese. I also picked up some of these thick, juicy blueberries while we were at HEB because they look so, so good. 
So this is going to be my first meal of the day. Yum. It's been an hour and it's time to spritz the meat just a little bit. We're using some apple juice to keep it moist. While I was eating my delicious quesadilla, I had a knock on the door and Amazon delivered this clothing rack to me. So I ordered this a couple of days ago because I have some plans. I have started pulling a bunch of my clothes that either no longer fits or I just don't wear that still has a lot of life in it. And I am going to be selling a ton of clothes on, I believe Poshmark is the website I think I'm gonna use. I also got all of my packing supplies in. I got my mailers, some tissue paper to wrap clothes in, some thank you cards, thank you stickers. And very soon I'm gonna be able to start listing my clothes in case anyone is interested. But I'd share that with you, I'm pretty excited. I went and got all my little stuff that I need. And I guess I could actually try this new little thing out and throw some clothes on there. Woohoo! She's a little flimsy, but she'll work. This definitely makes things a whole lot easier to sort through and see what I've got. The rack of ribs has been on there for three hours, so what we do next is we're pulling it off and throwing it in some foil to wrap it up. I sliced up some butter right here that we're gonna put on top. And we're gonna wrap it up. And then it'll go back on the grill for two more hours. Now back in the grill it goes for a little while longer. I am about to go head out front and do myself a little at home workout. And as a little bit of a snack, I'm gonna have this Love Good Fats Salted Caramel Bar. We have about an hour and a half until our dinner is ready, so I thought this would hold me over for the time being. What is it, boys? How dare that loud car go by our house? I know. How dare they? Look at y'all. Y'all look like a little gang right there. Y'all would totally protect us from those scary cars, right? Right, boys? Are y'all not the cutest? Y'all are just the cutest little cocker spaniels, aren't y'all? Yeah? I love these guys so much. Say hi to the camera, Bobo. Say hi, Cooper. Say hi. You're so cute. You're so cute, too. We got Cody in the kitchen cooking up what he wants to go with the ribs. He is making a corn casserole that he has been craving. Right, Cody? That's right. So what he has in here is a box of Jiffy cornbread mix, a can of creamed corn, and a can of whole kernel corn that was drained. To that, he is going to add a cup of sour cream. I think he wants to make it spicy, so he's gonna add some diced jalapenos. And he is going to add a half of a cup of butter. He also ended up adding a little bit of cheese into the mixture. And what's it go into the oven for, Cody? 45 minutes on 350. Look at Cody cooking. And I'm about to make some cabbage as well. Our dinner has come together. We pulled off the ribs from the smoker and they are falling apart, as you can tell. Here is the sauteed cabbage Cody made and the jalapeno corn casserole. Time to fix us up a plate and dig on in. Got my plate fixed. I just pulled a bunch of meat off the ribs. Got some of Cody's corn casserole to try. All right, it is dinner time because I am so hungry. Remember how earlier I ate that granola bar and I was like, well, I'm gonna eat this as fuel so I can go work out before dinner. Well, that didn't happen. I uh, helped Cody finish cooking dinner and then I sat my little lazy butt on the couch and did nothing and then ate dinner. And now it is 8.59 p.m. and I told myself I needed to get my happy little butt out here and do some exercise. So I just plugged in the elliptical. I am going to work out on that for a little while. I know I needed to get out here and do it, although it's a little bit later than I wanted. It's a thought that counts. I am out here about to do a workout and it's gonna suck, but we're doing it. 
I told myself that I wanted to do at least 30 minutes of cardio tonight. And guess what? I ended up doing over an hour. Woohoo! Six miles on the elliptical. It was not fun, but watching some YouTube videos got me through it. Now I need to head inside and do my 100 sit-ups. So the one bad thing about me doing an hour of cardio, while I was on the elliptical, I was shopping. I just bought myself an iPhone gimbal and then a gimbal for my vlogging camera because it's always so darn shaky. So I decided to just go YOLO and buy two of these. But the good thing is I can return both of them if they don't work. But yes, I also bought more markers as if I didn't have enough markers already. I just really love these markers and wanted more colors. They're just so good. Just look at how dirty these things have made their cage since this morning. Y'all have no shame. Why y'all so dirty? I can't wait until y'all can go outside for a little while during the day. And go poop out there. Yeah, y'all are so cute though. So adorable. All right, gotta wake up in the morning and do it all over again. Whew, I am looking a little bit rough, but it is now 11.53 p.m. We have been chilling on the couch, watching some TV, and now it is time to get ready for bed. But today overall was a great day. Got my exercise in, even though it was a little bit later than I had planned on. And I had actually planned on doing some weights today, but I guess that's a story for tomorrow instead, because I was being lazy. I feel like this summer shred that I'm doing is just helping me be more active. I am making healthier choices, and I feel like it is definitely helping me with a little bit of weight loss. Like I've mentioned a million times, I have some hormone issues. I have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, as well as PCOS, so weight loss does not come easy to me. However, usually through exercise and healthy eating, I can start seeing my body more so change shapes, like getting a little bit more curvy in places or my stomach getting a little bit smaller. But the whole weight loss thing, I try not to fret too hard over it because, um, yeah, my body just does not agree with it sometimes. But I am trying really hard and feeling really good. I feel like my stamina has gone up and overall, I am just feeling really, really good. But I hope that you guys enjoyed Summer Shred Episode 8. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't done so. And I will see y'all again real soon with another video. Bye, guys. Mwah!